sorry for the short delay. Technicalities. I'd now like to welcome Sarah on stage to commence her presentation showcasing the BPP growth story and sharing the plans for the future. Thank you, Sarah. Great. Yes. Well, unless you just want to. Yeah. Right. Uh, good evening, everybody, and thank you for being here tonight, and thank you for your patience. Um, obviously, you now have met us, and we're here really to talk to you about um, the experience at BPP. So I'm going to talk a little bit about BPP, and Vicky's going to talk a little bit more about some of the employability and skills that we think you will need for your future careers and how that links to the programs that we offer at BPP. So we're going to introduce ourselves, but I think you've heard, you see this enough now, so I think you know who we are and what we do. We were last here in Hyderabad in 2019, um, and it's amazing the growth that we've had and the number of students that have come. So imagine what it would have been like without COVID. So hopefully we can really start to engage and have a lot more from this wonderful community coming to study with us in BPP. So a little bit about us, which uh, we've already talked about. So I'm going to get straight into why you might consider BPP. I mean, obviously you're here, so you must be intrigued or interested in what we have to offer. Let's get my clicking right. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about the university as a whole, first of all. There's lots of facts and figures on there. I'm not going to talk about everything there, but our mission statement is building careers through education. So we don't approach it like other universities. We don't present academic programs. We present practical programs that are really going to help you to improve your career prospects and develop the skills that you'll need. And we're very, very um, strong at doing this. Now, we've talked about being number one for employability, and you'll notice it says number seven on there. In the international space, it's number seven. If I just look at international students, in the UK, if I add those in, it's number one. But I'm still really happy with that. I really like being above the University of Oxford. You know, that is incredible. Um, so we're top ten, and we beat most of the prestigious universities in the UK for employability because our students get jobs and I think that's what it's all about. It's all about coming to the UK, studying something you're really interested in but also getting that great career at the end of it. So for most of the programs that we're talking about in India, we're talking about um, the business school and I've been running the business school since 2017, and we have two or three campuses already, and we've got a fantastic new campus coming um, in May, June this year. It's almost ready. I went to see it last week. It's right in the city, uh, city area of London. It's got 51 classrooms, and this is for the business school. This is for our international students. So not only are you getting a great education at BPP, you're so important to us, you're getting a whole new building in the centre of London, and we can't wait to welcome you there, whatever you're going to be studying with us. And I think that we are pretty much the biggest business school in the UK. Many business schools have maybe two or 3,000 students, We've got over 7,000 students, and I think that's amazing because even though we're big, we're, all, we're also very, very friendly, and we know our students, we're always around, and this is a picture of me and my team. This was last week at graduation. I can't believe how small I am compared to the others, but there we are, um, and this is the team that leads the business school, and they've all worked with me for about 10, 12 years now. So we work really hard, and we've got lots of other team members as well to help 
people with their studies, because it's not just about what goes on in the classroom, it's about your whole experience. So it's about making sure that everything works for you, making sure that you know what you're doing, you can get all sorts of help um, if you need it. And these are some of the things that I think are really important and really good about our business school. Yeah, so we're very popular with India. Um, we've got lots of expert faculty. I mentioned earlier on the, the, the screen, we have a faculty who've lived and worked in India as well, so they understand um, sort of some of the culture and educational dynamics, and they really, really want to help people transition to UK education, which is obviously a highly valued um, prize for people to obtain. And the programs we develop are very modern. They are not boring, dull academic programs learning about theories that people wrote 30 years ago. They are about what's happening now in the world of business. And a little bit later, Vicky will be talking particularly about the MSc management, which I think potentially people might be interested in. There's no other MSc management program in the UK like ours, because ours is very different. And I had to put a lot of effort into convincing all of the academics in our community that we needed to do something very special. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on. So we think, and we know, that when you complete one of our programs, then generally you will be ready for work. So lots of stuff about the business school. But there are some other programs in other schools. There's law and there's healthcare leadership. And they all fit in with the same um, approach that we have at BPP, but I think one of the things that I wanted to get you thinking about is not just about what course do I want to come and study at BPP, but what, what, what career am I thinking of going into? What kind of job would I like to do at the end of it? This is the first step of that career, so this isn't about, oh, I'm just going to go and do some studying and see what happens next. This is about saying, I think I'm interested in being a project manager. Perhaps I'd like to be a data analyst. Those of us who want to be accountants, we tend to know that. Um, we tend to think that numbers are really exciting because I'm a qualified accountant. Um, great skills. As dean of the business school, I have to do a very big budget. I have to manage costs. And even though I don't practice as an accountant anymore, those accountancy skills I learned when I was studying and training are probably some of the most important skills that I ever got because they help me to do my job now. So if there's accountants or people who like numbers in the room, definitely accounting could be great. And then do you want to be a leader? Whether you want to be a strategic leader, maybe a team leader, maybe you want to manage your own business. Again, our programs really help you to think about the skills that you would need. So. If you apply to BPP, one of the things that we ask you to tell us about, not only why do you want to come and study at BPP, but what, what are your career goals? What is it that you want to do? So that we can really make sure that we can help you with that. And that's really important because we are always adding things to our programs, developing new ideas, and our faculty really want to know. So do you want to stay in the UK? Do you want to go back to India? Do you maybe want to go somewhere else in the world and work? And all of these things we want to help you with as you develop uh, and study with us at BPP. So what we've got here, and um, we had graduation, oh, not two weeks ago. Um, about 800 students graduated in London, and here are some. Um, and here are some of the things that you can see, some of the reviews that our students write about us on Trustpilot. So very much they're telling us what they think. And I really like some of these. You know, one of our wonderful students saying the best two years of my life. I mean, that's really nice. And that was in lockdown as well. So, you know, that's quite amazing. We did really well during lockdown. We kept everything going. And I think our students are very grateful. Um, this lady up here, that's a picture of Anna. Anna runs our student support services, and she is fantastic at making sure that she, her team really help you with everything outside of the classroom, whether it's accommodation or finance or just generally you need to know how to do something. Anna and her team are, are there, and we think that's really special because 
we've put a lot of effort into this, this support, just, just like you get here when you do your application uh, with, with our partners here in India. Yeah, and there's a few more as well. I really like this one. I mean, this is one of our graduates, and that was the photo that she sent us. You know, she got her ACCA balloons because she got her qualification. Yeah, and she told us, best university for ACCA. I would agree with that. <laughs> BPP has been training ACCA accountants for over 40 years, so if you want to get ACCA, I don't know why you would go anywhere else, because we know how to do it. And we have a fantastic team who are developing that program to make it as easy as possible, because it's actually really, really challenging. And I am going to say something about that a little bit later on. So we had a lot of fun at graduation with students getting their photos, getting their gowns, you know. And this comment here, tutors really care about you. So again, we're not a faceless, distant university or business school. We're very close to our students. And we want you to tell us if things are going wrong, because sometimes they do, and we'll be here to fix them. Yeah, and we're always very keen uh, to do that as quickly as possible. So what we're here to present today, and you may already have been you know, working with one of our consultants, there are sort of three, three areas that, that we're offering in BPP. Our MSc management portfolio, which has got different pathways through it, so management, project management, data analytics, and the brand new one, which is digital marketing, very important for businesses today um, as they go more digital. Um, 12 and 18 months, and we have placement opportunities that, that Vicky is going to talk about. Now, some of the things to think about with MSc management, we're very, very flexible. So we've got lots of start dates, so you'll be able to come and study that whenever you want to. Um, and it's got lots of digital skills throughout. So you've got a lot of choices. So when you're working with your consultant, have a think about how long do you want to study with us. You know, the 18-month program gives you a bit more time in the UK, a bit more time to get everything done, pass all of those assessments, and get some great um, development opportunities. So lots of different options in the MSc management space. And that's our biggest and most popular program. Many, many students from all over the world, but particularly from India, come to study that one. Then we get into the accountancy portfolio. Can I just, if anybody put their hand up? Anybody interested in accountancy? Oh, I've got one hand. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, hopefully you're going to get some very, very um, special uh, support then. We've got a few different programs in our accountancy range, and they're all suitable for different types of accountants, depending on where you're starting, really. So my advice on this would really be to work with your consultant um, on the right program for you. So if people are coming out of high school, we'd recommend our bachelor's program. If people have already done a, a, a bachelor's program, maybe our advanced diploma might be better. But it's really important if you want to be an accountant to understand these exams are quite hard. There's a lot of work to do. We can help you to succeed, but you wouldn't be coming on that program and thinking, oh, it's going to be quite easy. I'll have a very relaxing time when I'm in London or, or Birmingham or Manchester. It's a lot of work to do. So we really want to make sure that you pick the right program. So the BSc has a bit more time. The advanced diploma is really suitable for people who perhaps know a bit about accountancy already. And then there is a, healthcare, a small healthcare portfolio. We've got psychology and we've got healthcare leadership. Um, psychology is run from the business school and we are um, starting to look at maybe introducing more business psychology in the future, but right now it's a traditional psychology program. And healthcare leadership is very much for anybody here who might be a healthcare professional, um, whether that's in, you know, it could be from nursing, dentistry, any other form of um, healthcare, where you're thinking about a leadership role. And that one could be really exciting if you were thinking of coming to work in the UK on the graduate route because we have a great skill shortage in some of these areas. So anybody who's got a healthcare qualification, coming and studying that leadership um, qualification as well would give you a great opportunity to get some fantastic work experience in the UK. So I think it's quite 
quite straightforward. Those of you who perhaps are interested in management, it's all about choosing which pathway or stream you're interested in. And that goes back to the point about what, what, what's the job that I want to do. For those small numbers, I won, maybe one or two others who didn't put their hand up who want to be an accountant, as I said, the, the, the decision you have to think about quite carefully, which is the right program for you. So I'm not going to go through this slide in a lot of detail here because I don't think there's that many. But when you talk to your consultant, have a look at all the different programs we've got and say, okay, which is the right one for me? Which is the one that I'm going to be most successful at? And actually, we've got a new bachelor's program, which is accounting with digital business. So again, for people who think, yeah, I, I might want to be an accountant, but I'm not going to commit to that straight away. What I'm actually going to do is study some accountancy and some business, get some broader skills, and then maybe I'll go on and do another qualification afterwards. And what's really good about our portfolio is that whatever you start with here, you can always go on and do another program with BPP. And we're seeing more and more students staying with us now um, to do a second program, which is obviously great for getting your qualifications if you need them. So really, I think accountancy is something that you need to spend a little bit of time working with your consultant and really working out which is the right program for you. And we're always very happy uh, to help with those kind of queries. And if you're going to come to us and study at BPP, we kind of work out that there's a whole, there's a lot of steps to go through to get here. We know that. And it's always been quite challenging with visas and evidencing all sorts of things, getting your documents together, and that's been made very difficult due to the pandemic. However, we've got it organized in such a way that hopefully we can give you all the support you need so that you can get your application done with your consultants here in India. We can then help you with pre-arrival support, and we really want you to get online before you come. Yeah. Get onto all of our systems, get your timetable, have a look at your study materials, have a look at practicing some English, as Vicky mentioned earlier, because you can get ahead with your studies before you come. And then when you arrive in campus, you can actually come and have some fun for a couple of weeks. You can come and do your induction. You can have a tour. You can come to some of the events. You can get some tech support, making sure you can access everything. So I have put a little note down there about laptops. We're quite digital now in BPP. Obviously, the whole world is after the pandemic. Um, even though all of your classes will be face-to-face -face in center, all of your assessments and your materials are going to be online. So you need your own laptop. It needs to be a good specification so it can run the kind of software that you need so that you can do your exams really easily. Our students love this. The fact that now you don't have to come into a big exam hall and do exams. You can do them at home on your laptop. We've got a good piece of software that can make sure you're doing it properly, so we can't cheat and maybe look things up, but it is a lot less stressful than having to come to a big hall like this and sit for three hours and write, and we're really proud of that. But you know, to be able to access that kind of thing, you must have a laptop, um, and it, obviously we can help with you know, advising what kind of one that you should get. And then we're pretty sure most people are interested in the graduate route. What we want to see is people coming in, getting through their program on time, exiting, and having the nice bit of time at the end to be able to apply for the visa um, to stay in the UK, which means you need to keep up with your studies. You need to keep going. You need to do everything on time so that you don't run out of time at the end. And we will make sure you don't. We've got a team of people who will chase you if you're not doing things, find out where you are if you're not in class. So it's really important uh, that we uh, set, set you off on the right track at the beginning. So that's a little bit about what you can expect by coming to BPP. And I'm now going to hand over to Vicky to talk a little bit more about the employability. So as I said, it's not about what do I want to study at BPP but what is the job that I want to get and how is this going to help me? Thank you very much. Okay, so you've heard we're the University of Fashion, but what does that really mean? Okay, so 
we've mentioned the pandemic a couple of times as well today, but digital transformation has been going on before the pandemic hit us. So many of us were already looking at what the implications of that were for the future of work. And as Sarah has mentioned, you know, so much has gone into the design of our programs to make them future ready for you, so those digital skills are embedded. But everything is changing, and it's changing really fast. And that's causing an enormous disruption to the workforce. And that is the workforce that you are going to be entering when you complete your studies. And suddenly, we thought these things might be think happening 10 years from now, but they're happening now. The future really is now. And it's impacting everything from the types of jobs you're going to have to the types of skills you are going to need. So some really interesting work from the World Economic Forum on what does that mean for future careers? What kind of jobs are you going to be looking for when you complete your studies? And you don't need to be able to read the detail here, but on the left-hand side, these are jobs that are going up in demand. On the right-hand side, jobs that are going down in demand. And we can see a few things in common with those increasing demand jobs. A lot of them are tech. You can see data specialists, for example, data analysts, digital transformation specialists. Uh, but there are also people like project managers. Now, project managers may appear in both lists, but to get a project management job in the future, you're going to have to understand the kinds of software programs that today's project managers use. It's not just theory. It's how do I do this? And I think that's something that makes us quite special. So for you, as you think about your careers, we're seeing that careers are totally changing. People are changing their jobs more often, average tenure, four and a half years. We're seeing that decline all the time. People are moving around. The job for life, it doesn't exist anymore. And really importantly, especially as we're education experts, this idea of the half-life of a learned skill. That means that any new skill you acquire will be out of date completely in 10 years. It's half-life of five years. So we are moving into an age of constant learning. No longer just you do your education, sit back and enjoy your career. And I'll come back to why that's so important the way we do things. So, this great acceleration, this rapid pace of change, it's driving demand for these new types of skills. The kinds of skills that I was taught at university, that's not what counts anymore. Everything I did at university is ancient history, essentially. All those tech skills, technology and digital skills, really high demand. So obviously there are a lot of roles there for specialists. People, for example, who want to choose our data analytics pathway, absolutely. But interestingly, I would suggest to you, it's not just to become a specialist. Every job is going to need to have a certain understanding of how to use data, not just data specialists. And those technology skills are only one part of the equation. People skills, those things robots can't do are increasingly important too. And here on the right-hand side, again from the World Economic Forum, those trending top 10 skills for 2025, and that's only three years away now. You will definitely need to tick these off as you go forward in your education and move into your career. So, what does that look like in India? Well, quite interesting here, that, that chart on the top left there, uh, there's a real recognition. Young people here understand that skills are changing rapidly. You see it around you. So actually, you're right out in front in Asia Pacific in recognizing that. You also recognize in India, but that's quite scary. You know, change is not always super comfortable. You have to be ready to embrace it. Um, so yeah, you're a little bit daunted. Not as daunted as people in Singapore, you'll be interested to hear. Um, but yeah, you're, you're thinking about it. So there is change. It's a little bit scary. However, one of the most important things for you to recognize is 
We are moving into a world where employers are interested in your skills as much as they are interested in your, you know, education. Or where did you go? What grade did you get? Or where have you worked? That's all fine. It looks lovely on a CV. I'm not against it. But you need to be able to demonstrate your skills to an employer for them to hire you. They want to know you can do things. 79% of organizations in Asia Pacific are looking at your skills. Not only when you're recruited is it important, but also for your career progression. These are HR leaders down here. 61% of them say your skills are what's going to make a difference for your career progression. I think you're getting the message. Skills are important, right? And here also on the right hand, this is from LinkedIn Learning. Um, these are some of those skills that you need. And I was really interested when I saw this list because, I mean, this speaks so much to us, Sarah, doesn't it? With, especially, you know, with our MSB management, for example, but in all of our programs. And again, I'll show you why in a minute. Critical thinking and problem solving. We'll be asking you to do that every day. Communication. You'll be expected not only to write coursework, which of course you will, but also to give presentations, uh, write communications that you might use, for example, in a business context. So we are focused on these all the time. And of course, innovation and creativity, businesses need that. It's one of those World Economic Forum top trending skills, innovation. Again, can't be done by a robot, still needs human beings, so there's still jobs for us. Okay, so there's a massive transformation going on in your country. I think we saw that with that recognition in here that things are changing really fast. And it's resulting in new jobs, different types of jobs, new skills. And it's an explosive growth that needs to be fulfilled by graduates and the brightest and the best, just like yourselves, going forward. And those are areas like business development, data management, management of people skills, and those digital marketing and customer intelligence skills. So you see, even in marketing, there's that need to be able to look at data. So how do we address this need? Well, we have what we call our career-ready strategy. And it means that everything we do is focused on thinking about those skills. And these are the ones that we make sure are embedded in everything we do. Our 10 career-ready skills based on the research the work we do with businesses so we understand what they are. And I think, you know, this fantastic quote here in the middle, you know, knowledge is not where it's at anymore. You can Google it. It's not important for you to be able to remember information. It's important for you to demonstrate your skills, and that's what we're about. So what does that look like in practice? Well, it starts, as Sarah's already mentioned, before you even reach us. Get connected. Right there, you're demonstrating a digital skill, okay? And engage with the pre-arrival support, demonstrating another skill of being able to manage yourself. Join our virtual campus and get your IT set up, more tech skills. Get ahead with our professional and academic skills so that you're prepared. Again, you would expect that of a professional, that they're prepared. And take advantage of ongoing learning perhaps outside your course, whether that's some extra English, some academic skills workshops, or even things like taking your uh, Microsoft qualification in Excel, for example. It's available there for you, because we're looking for you to cultivate that digital mindset to develop your career management skills, because your career is your responsibility. We want you to learn how to learn so that you can embrace lifelong learning and be ready for a future in which the high half life of skills is only five years. And to develop skills, not just knowledge. So how do we do it? Well, in a whole load of different ways, from careers fairs to virtual internships, from graduates' first aptitude practice tests, master classes, um, employers coming in to speak about their businesses and what's going on, those external speakers. And each of those things enables you to evidence your abilities and your skills. 
You just have to grasp the opportunity because it's all there for you. So looking at our MSC management, we've spoken already about how they were designed with the future in mind from the very beginning. The modules are designed for you to be ready to go into a leadership role. Even if that's starting as a team leader, you still need some of those digital skills, those leadership skills. And those streams focused on future careers, whether you're choosing project management, digital marketing, data analytics, or the pure MSc management. Again, there's a focus on your personal effectiveness skills and also how you need to use data for decision making as well as how you can manage in an age of digital disruption. And if we remember those um, increasing demand jobs from the World Economic Forum on one of those early slides, circled here are data analytics, project management, strategic uh, business, organizational development, all of the things are wrapped in our MSC management. And not to forget accountancy, um, all our programs align to ACCA, that is the biggest global qualification in accountancy, and we know that that is a, is a um, passport to a global career in accountancy if you have ACCA. We include digital and data in our programs, and we also talk about how to develop technical accountancy skills. Um, and in BPP does an amazing project called the Digital Accountant, which Sarah was very involved in conceptualizing, which actually is for our corporate clients, but we understand the future of accountancy like no other organization. And again, those employability skills, you know, from the beginning to end, so that you build your foundational technical skills, you build your business skills, and you build those personal effectiveness skills. And uh, you've already seen lots of quotes from students themselves, but, you know, here's another one. You know, for accountancy and finance, BPP is the best place. So, our MSE management does have this additional six-month component, which is absolutely another opportunity to focus on you, your career growth, and it, it's about taking control of your career and being ready to go um, as soon as you're done. So for some of you, this might be a fantastic option if you want that work experience. If you're aiming really high and you want to know that your CV and the, all of the demonstration of the skills is really there, um, this is definitely it. It's also a place to go if you want to focus on that graduate route um, because it really helps you be ready to grab those work opportunities in the UK. So Sarah very modestly said that, that uh, we're number seven in her statistic at the beginning. Well, we are, but we're also number one. There's a different way of phrasing that data. We took a look at that data very hard from Lisa our data analytics teams, and against the Russell Group, that's all those big names, that's Oxford, Cambridge, that's the LSE, that's all of them, against the Russell Group of 24 leading universities, for, UK, for our UK postgrads who went into employment and in, are in highly skilled occupations, BPP actually ranked number one. Pretty impressive. Sarah, back to you for a moment. Great, thank you, Vicky. So thank you, everybody, for your patience. That is a whistle-stop tour of BPP, and I hope it does stimulate more questions, because the more questions you have, the better informed you're going to be when you make the right choice for you. So I just want to finish off very quickly with um, just some very practical advice, um, some questions that we tend to see um, coming from particularly in India, you know, do I need an IELTS certificate? We, we have very specific arrangements for um, assessing English. We have to assess English as part of the regulations, but we have special arrangements um, in India. And I just really want to uh, recognize Taranjit for all the work that he does with our compliance teams to make this work, because it's not easy. <laughs> it's a lot of work, but you know, we want you to succeed and we want to make it easy for you. Um, can I start the course online and come to the UK later? That's what we've been doing during the pandemic, but in the UK, we're back to normal now, so we, we, we're not really offering online anymore. We've got lots of flexible starts, because um, obviously we know there are still some timing issues with, with visas and application processing, but 
COVID restrictions have been lifted in the UK, it's very safe, uh, and we're back face to face in the classroom, and hopefully when you guys come, we'll be in that lovely new building that, that we showed at the beginning. Um, we will help you to get part-time work. Remember, you can work 20 hours a week when you're studying. Um, we have lots of uh, job boards and companies that come looking. And actually, it's quite a good time, as I mentioned earlier, because um, um, uh, European uh, students can't actually, or people can't stay in the UK at the moment because of Brexit, which means that there are lots of part-time jobs available. A very odd question that I often get at the start of a course, I, I'm always quite interested. I, we see students who go through a really long process to come to BPP, and then when you arrive, you say, do I have to come to all of my classes? How many hours do I have to come? And I know that's because there's loads of other exciting things to do. But yes, you do have to come to all your classes, and probably about 12 hours a week, maybe a little bit more for some of the programs, like some of the accountancy programs. But you do need to commit to attending everything and keeping up with your studies. It isn't just about attending classes, it's also about doing all of the work that we give you before and after. So it's a full-time commitment. You have got time to do part-time work, but again, that is going to test some of your personal organizational skills and your resilience as well to be able to do this. Um, do I need to live near the campus? You know, BPP doesn't have accommodation, but, but, but we know where students live. We can help and advise on that. Most students live within an hour of, of our campus. So do have a look at where you want to live and, and how you're going to get into the campus because, you know, it, it, it is a commitment that you're making and we do need to see you there. And then we've mentioned the graduate route. Um, it is available. Our, all of our students are very keen on it. And what we're saying is commit to your course get everything done on time, and then that application is really, really easy. And we really hope um, that many of you succeed and stay in the UK uh, to work and add to your experience. I think we've talked a lot about that, so I'll just end there by saying thank you so much for committing this evening and for listening. We're very happy to talk about course options and answer any questions. Please make sure that you've got all the information that you need before you leave so that you can go away and have a really good think about uh, what your next step is. And I do hope that that is with BPP. So thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. We'll be around for a little while if you have questions and you're too shy to ask them in front of everybody. big round of applause for Sarah and Vicky. Thank you very much for your presentation and it was very, very informative. We'd now like to move on to the third and final segment of this evening. And we're going to show you through some examples of some role plays some of the common mistakes that students make. So if I could request Mohit Gambir, Carol Allen, and Sarah Singh to join me on the stage whilst we conduct three short role plays to help you better understand the areas where we sometimes fall short of students. Is it working? It is. Hello. Can you hear me? Excellent. So, role play number one. The importance of research. In this first example, we focus on the importance of research. Carol is our admissions manager. Serendip is student number one. And Mohit is student number two. Carol, the floor is yours. My name is Taranjit and I'm from Punjab. Great. So can you tell me why you have chosen to study in the UK? The UK is a very 
UK is a very beautiful and a lot of international people. UK has the best quality education, best education in the world with Oxford University. UK offers a lot of facilities for students and is a very good place to study. Also, my father told me to go to, study, to, go to UK for studies. It's the best place. So that was example number one, moving to student number two. Hi there. What's your name and where are you from? Hi. My name is Mohit Gambi and I'm from Mumbai, India. Great. So can you tell me why you have chosen to study in the UK? Sure. I looked into studying at various countries including India, but there were three main reasons why I chose the UK. Firstly, I'm planning to study a Master's of Accountancy and Finance, and since UK is the financial capital of the world, what would be a better place than the UK? Secondly, UK degrees are internationally recognized, and that acts as a platform for opportunities worldwide. And thirdly, my research shows that my course comes with a professional certification of the globally recognized ACC awarding body, and I end up with a dual qualification, which will significantly enhance my knowledge in the subject, not to mention the added value that it will have on my CV and improve my career prospects. So, putting yourself in the shoes of the admissions manager, Carol, or a visa officer for that matter, which student do you think is better research? Student number one, if you'd like to raise your hand to student number one, Baron, who do you think? One person. Yes, and student number two, who do you think is better? Student number two? That's a lot of hands. Well done. That's right. So student number two, it's a very small example, but it gives you insight into the importance of doing research. Research is not only important for you to make the right academic decision, but will also be the ground for your entire future. Carol, um, anything you'd like to add in terms of where you think students, you know, what they should be doing in terms of research? I think students should go into the university website. Students should go into the university website. British Council website will also give you more information about studying in the UK, attend webinars and information sessions, connect with students studying at the university at your choice, request to speak to faculty members where in doubt, UKVI website provides guidance on visa processes, BBC News for general updates in the media, the information is available at your fingertips, make the most of it. Tell me, Saranjit, 
I can see from your CV that you have studied a master's from the UK. Please tell me, please, can you tell me why you are the right candidate for this role? I've done my master's. Well, I have done my master's from the UK, and I can double your business very fast. And all the, with all the marketing tools I've learned from the course. Also, I'm very good. I'm a very good team player, and your team members will be able to work well with me. Role play number two. So the same answer now coming from candidate number two. Sir, through the tools I've learned during my master's degree in the UK, I can analyze and find opportunities to add value to your business, thereby allowing us to scale and accelerate the business very swiftly. In addition, my course has enabled me to evaluate my skills, and I can play the role of a leader and a team player, depending on the needs of the business, with an aim to achieve the overarching objective of business growth. So now, if you can put yourself in the shoes of the employer, which candidate do you think has a better articulated, has better articulated the answer to this particular question? Candidate number one, for instance, if you can raise your hand. For instance, in fact, oh, one over there. We've got one time. Candidate number two, more than two. Excellent. So. You're absolutely right, we do follow the round of applause. You can see in this example that candidate number two was definitely much better articulated. So the idea is that you need to continue to work on improving your English now and in the future for your personal and professional betterment. Carol, I think you'd like to add a few words here as well. Anything else you'd like to add on the English? There's one message I think that's been going across throughout the presentation and throughout the whole evening which Mickey and Sarah have been mentioning about um, practicing on your English before you arrive. Um, why not have a head start? Why don't you start your English earlier? Listen to news, radios, movies, learn all the accents. Um, because I tend to get a lot of calls from the border force uh, at the airport, I get a lot of students uh, who are stopped. And it's not that the students can't speak English, it's purely because the students are very shy, they don't open up very quickly, and they have difficulty understanding the accent. Um, at the end, obviously, students do get released, um, and they do well at, at the end, but I think it is important to stress that you all start practicing your English a lot, lot earlier. Get a head start. Practice your English. Be you ready. Thank you, Carol. Moving on to our third and final role play for the evening. We're going to be talking about absolutely zero tolerance to fraud. In this third example, this is actually a real life example that happened with the candidate that we um, interviewed. The impersonated student during an interview and was not only called out but rejected outright outrightly by an interview team. So Carol in this example plays the interviewer and Mohit is the candidate in this example. How are you doing today? Very well, sir. Are you all set to apply for the visa? Yes, sir, absolutely. Are you married? And will your wife be accompanying you? No, sir. I, I'm not married. I am single. Are you sure? Uh, yes, 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 I'm single. That is very strange, as this contradicts what reflects on your passport, where your wife's name is clearly mentioned as the name of the spouse. I, you, you are right, sir. I forgot. <laughs> So this actually happened, we were doing an interview of one student and we asked him if you're married and the student said very clearly, blatantly, that no, I'm not married. 
but then if we had the password copy in front of us, it showed the name of the wife on the password copy. So we asked the student, but your passport says that that's your wife's name. And he says, you're right, sir, I forgot I was married. <laughs> <laughs> that was the end of that incident. Needless to say that he failed. So, as you can see, we may have had a good laugh, but this is a very serious violation. And just to clarify our stand once again, we have absolutely zero tolerance to fraud. Carol, I think you'd like to add a little word here. Yes, I agree 100%. We have zero tolerance to fraud. Any students caught trying to misuse BPP University as a backdoor entry route to UK will not be tolerated. No refund will be made to the students. So, I'd like you to give just a round of applause to our lead actors. Just a yep. second. I just want to give context on that fraud piece a little bit more. I'll tell you what's happening. Uh, ever since the post-study work permit has been introduced in the UK, the number of applications coming to the UK has gone through the roof. Just to us at PPP, I think for the intake that we are currently recruiting, we've received more than 6,000 applications, and that's the volume that we're dealing with. The problem that we're faced with is, and this is common across the industry, is a lot of students are perhaps trying to use the university as a backdoor route to enter into the UK, and that's something that we as an institution do not tolerate. And the whole idea is to reiterate the message that if anyone is going to try, we have our compliances in place. We have a team of 38 members in Mumbai that does compliances. We check the documents very thoroughly. We do interviews of every student that wants to apply and come to us for further studies. We will be asking difficult questions only to ensure that the students are genuine because we make a difference to your lives and we want to make sure that we are making a difference to the lives of the correct and the right of the genuine students. So we need your cooperation in making sure that you spread the message across your network of friends and agents that at BPP University there is absolutely zero tolerance to fraud. Thank you. I'd like you to give a round of applause to our lead actors this evening, Carol, Mohit and Sarandit. Um, just want to thank Pooja for uh, coming up with this idea. I think it's great um, and I think everybody uh, would give a round of applause to Pooja. Thank you. So we hope that you found these pointers useful and have something to take back with you this evening. I'd like to open the floor to any questions that you may have for anyone or any one of our two delegates this evening, whether it's Carol, Mohit, Sarandit, Vicky or Sarah. Does anyone have any questions at all? We're happy to help. Whilst you are thinking of any questions, I would like to urge any student that is here to apply today as there's an on-spot admission discount. Please do apply and do register with PPP. If you have any questions about PPP University, the work placement, the visa, admission, or any other related topics, feel free to ask your questions. Thank you everyone for being here. It's a great pleasure to be with you all. One message that I want to give to everybody is we don't entertain willful misconduct and fraud. 
anybody thinks he's too smart, he can do any sort of standard and cross. We are not going to have any tolerance for that. And sir, rightly said, there is no fee refund. So if you want to take a risk of 11 lakhs, 8.5 lakhs, you are free to take. But you will be very calm. And as a vote of calm, So, I I want to tell you all, uh, we have sent around 1,000 students, more than 1,000 students to BPP. And the best part is we have not received a single complaint from them. So, I am very thankful to the BPP team, Sara Ma'am, Dukhi Ma'am, Kharul Sara and my India team. Before this, I used to work for another university. If I send 25 students, I used to get a complaint for 20 students. So the average was around 80, 75 to 80 percent used to complain me, but BPP has not received a single complaint. Thank you BPP, thank you all, thank you very much. So uh, everybody have to take dinner and please if you have any questions you can come here. Uh, we have got around uh, 95 offers which are already been issued. So Taranji sir and Kirtan Goyal will look after it. Uh, whoever has received the offer letter, they will receive a kit, a diary from power bank along with your offer letter. So they will be calling the names. If you are available, please come. And if you have just come, and if you want to go for resort registration, you can just go through a Google form, which will be given by your, our team. And if you have come to another consultant also, they will give you that Google form. If you fill it today, and you send it to us before 12 o'clock, you will get 250 points additional scholarship. Thank you.